Tigers stretch across Northern Europe, Asia, and North America. In the taiga, the temperature is almost always cold. For half of the year, the temperature is below freezing. However, throughout the year, the temperature ranges from negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It rains 12 to 33 inches a year, and it rains mostly during the summer. The summers in taigas are short, and the winters are long. The producers of taiga are jack pines, black spruces, white firs, Siberian spruces, paper birches, white poplars, and Douglas firs. The primary consumers are snowshoe rabbits, river otters, red foxes, balls, and wolverines, which in turn are eaten by grizzly bears, gray wolves, Canadian lynxes, bobcats, bald eagles, and black bears. Deforestation is beginning to be a big issue in the taiga. The trees are necessary to make paper and other living necessities. The inhabitants of Canada don't realize that the more trees they take down, the smaller the taiga gets and therefore the animals and plants who reside in the taiga will lose their home and might go extinct or endangered. Nothing is being done to stop this problem. The food web of the taiga biome includes producers and autotrophs, which have jack pine, black spruce, Belgian fir, and white spruce, who all get their energy from the sun. And the primary consumers, which include the snowshoe rabbit, who eats plants, red squirrels, who eats conifer cones, fungi, and fruit, the voles, who eat grass and plants, and the red deer, who eats leaves and grass. Secondary consumers, which include the gray owl, who eats voles, birds, and insects, the wolverines, which eat the caribou, berries, and plants, and the red-headed woodpecker, which eats insects, fruits, and berries and the boreal chickadees who eats insects and seeds. The tertiary consumers include garter snakes, which eat small animals, bobcats, which eat mice, squirrels, rabbits, and grouse, black bears who eat berries, fish, and insects, and the rough-legged hawk who eat voles, lemmings, small, and small animals. The decomposers and detrivores include the sow bug and honey fungus who eat decomposing animals. The biomass pyramid in the taiga biome is made up of 20,925,000 kilograms per kilometer squared of grass, 20,925 kilograms per kilometer squared of the snowshoe hare, 2,100 kilograms per kilometer squared of the red fox, and 4,200 kilograms per kilometer squared of the wolf. The number pyramid is made up of First of trees, then voles, then owls, then bears. The energy pyramid is made up of berries, arboreal lichens, mosses, paper birch, aspen, twin leaf, and the dwarf willow, which gives energy to the red squirrel, snowshoe hare, bruce, voles, lemmings, beavers, moose, and trues, which give energy to the owl, arctic fox, red fox, weasels, sables, fishers, and martin which give energy to wolves, black bears, grizzly bears, lynx, and coyotes. Moss growing on trees is an example of mutualism. The tree houses the moss, while the moss protects the tree. Another example of mutualism is the black spruce and lichen. The lichen eats the dead matter from the tree, while the tree gets nutrients from the lichen. Mutualism is pervasive between the plants and the taiga. Grizzly bears and black bears hibernate during the winter because it is difficult to find any food to eat during the harsh winter months. They have thick fur to protect them from the cold of their environment and keep them alive during hibernation. The bears with the thicker fur are more likely to survive the winters and are thus able to reproduce, which is an example of natural selection. An experiment led by Stan Bouton on squirrels' evolution suggests that red squirrels of the taiga produce 18 days earlier than they did 10 years ago. 
This is a result of very, very fast evolution. This was caused by the amount of food in the taiga. The balsam fir that they usually consumed was difficult to harvest and eat, so they didn't have enough energy to reproduce. Therefore, they began reproducing earlier so that they could attain energy from the balsam fir to do so. This also made the red squirrels fitter. Plants in the taiga have also adapted over the years so that they can recover from the winter faster. Many trees are evergreen, which means that they bear leaves throughout the entire year. This is so that they can begin to photosynthesize right away when the temperatures rise after the winters. They also have darker needles, which allow more solar heat to be absorbed. The needle shape of the leaves help reduce water loss and aids in the shedding of snow. Other trees in the taiga have branches that droop downward to help shed excess snow to keep the branches from breaking. Unlike most animals, the snowshoe rabbit migrates to the taiga for winter. During this time, it changes its fur color from a rusty brown to completely white so it can hide from predators. Its feet are long and furry and act as snowshoes, hence the name snowshoe rabbit. The gray wolf doesn't migrate. It is always in the taiga. It has thick fur to protect it from the cold. Despite their name, gray wolves' gene pool consists of alleles for fur colors that range from brown to gray to black and even white. Those with white fur are more likely to survive because they blend into the snow and can hunt prey undetected or hide from predators. They most likely evolved from the Canis lepophagus, a small narrow-skulled northern American canine from the Miocene era. Gray wolves are relatives of coyotes. The river otter has a dark brown back and can either be light brown or gray on the stomach. Their eyes are located near the top of the skull to give them the ability to see above water while swimming underwater. The nostrils of a river otter are located at the top of the nose to enable it to breathe while most of its body is submerged. It lives in freshwater lakes in the taiga. The Labrador duck of the Canadian taiga went extinct in 1878. It was hunted as food but its meat tasted bad and rotted quickly so it went for extremely low prices. However, it is said that over-harvesting of their eggs was the sole cause of their extinction. Passenger pigeons have also gone extinct. The number of passenger pigeons was greatly reduced by hunting, but this stopped when suitable habitat was available for tens of thousands of the birds that still remained, who were moved there because they were endangered. The colonies were so small that predators were able to have a significant impact on their population. The last individual died in captivity in 1914. Dawson's caribou, which is another extinct species, were hunted for their meat, skin, fur, and antlers. The reason their extinction is the same as many other extinct animals. Humans. We have hunted them and countless others out of existence. They became extinct in 1908 when the last one was shot so it could be used as a museum specimen. It had taken less than 150 years from first contact with Europeans for the caribou to be wiped out.